Mistake number one. There will be three different sections of this bar with three different torque values, but the torques are not 400, 200, and 800. In order to find the internal torque in each of the three sections, you have to use method of sections to find these internal torques. So the normal angle of twist equation is an integral over the entire length of your shaft, T over JG, where T is the torque, J is polar moment of inertia, and G is the modulus of rigidity. For this particular problem, the diameter is constant, so J is going to be a constant, polar moment of inertia. If it's a homogeneous material, then G, the modulus, modulus of rigidity, will be constant. And then torque is going to be constant for each of the individual sections. So this does let us simplify this problem to one of just a summation instead of an integral. We're going to add the angle of twist B to C plus angle of twist C to D plus angle of twist D to A, all three of those together. TL over JG, add all those up, that will give us the overall angle of twist from A to B. So the next step is gonna to be to find our three torque values, but this brings us to mistake number two. This is the sign convention. And when using angle of twist, you cannot simply say clockwise is positive and counterclockwise is negative or vice versa like you would do for moments in a two-dimensional problem. For twisting, when you have an object twisting, if you see my two hands, my hands are rotating in different directions and yet they both cause the same twist. This means that at the end of the bar, if we call clockwise rotation positive, then this means our internal torque in the middle of the bar positive will be counterclockwise, right? In the opposite direction. Now, it might seem pretty strange at first, but consider the opposite. Consider if both ends were being torqued the same direction, it wouldn't be twisting at all. It would just be rolling. So to find three torques in three different sections, I'll do a method of sections. So first, let me draw a little purple squiggly line here. I'm cutting off just the very nub of the end of this shaft. So I've got my 800 on one side that's positive. So on the other side, there's also gonna be 800 in the opposite direction for balance, but this is still gonna be positive 800, again, because opposite directions are causing the same twist, even though they are resisting each other from a statics point of view. For the middle section of the rod, we've got 800 and 200 both going in the same direction. So my internal torque is 1000 Newton meters in the opposite direction, but still positive. Again, you can see why this mistake is so easy to make to mix up your signs for this type of problem. And the one that's totally crazy is we, if we look at the entire beam just about, like cut it off just before the wall, 800 plus 200 minus 400 is 600. So we've got a torque of 600 Newton meters through section BC which seems crazy that the 600 is pointing the same direction as the 400, but it has an opposite sign. Again, this is something students get wrong all the time. Your internal torque is oppositely signed as the externally applied torques. Mistake number three, distances. Distances are not 300, 600, 600, right? You gotta convert to meters. Always convert everything to meters, newtons, right? Your base unit, so 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 0 0.6 meters for your lengths. Mistake number four, J, the polar moment of inertia. If you, depending on which textbook you look this up in, you're gonna see two different versions of this equation, one with a radius, one with a diameter. It's pi over two radius to the fourth, pi over 32 diameter to the fourth. So make sure you use the right one for the number that you're using. For me, I'm using 0 0.05 meters for diameter, so I'm pi over 32 version, which gets me this 0 0.00000614 meters to the fourth. And now you can see why mistake number three was really easy to make, having the wrong units for length, because when you've got other terms with like a 10 to the minus seven, it's really easy to be off by a factor of a thousand and you might not actually even notice until you get to the very end. 
Mistake number five, G, modulus of rigidity. In SI units, you're probably gonna get this right pretty easily. You just look up the number, 75 gigapascals, so that's 75 times 10 to the nine. Easy, no problem. If this were an English units problem, and you were looking up in KSI, this value is 11,000 KSI, not 11.0 KSI. You see in the, the header at the top of this column has a times 10 to the third up at the top. So you take all those numbers in there, multiply them by 1,000. This is done because in English units, we don't really use MSI. We don't use like mega pounds per square inch, right? Just KSI. Um, so 10,000, 11,000 KSI. All right, let's plug everything in. I wanna check my units to make sure that I've actually got them all correct. So I've got Newtons cancels off from the top and the bottom. I count, I've got two meters up in the top and I've got a meter squared in the like denominator of the denominator. So those two cancel out the meters fourth, which is good. This angle should be unitless, which means that it's in radians. Plug in all my numbers, point. 27 radians, so convert that to degrees, positive 1.57 degrees as the angle of twist for the entire shaft from A to B. And now you might be asking, that sign convention I chose at the very beginning, it did not actually follow the right hand rule, right? If we we're following the right hand rule where like your thumb is the direction of the shaft and your fingers curl in the direction of positive, that's actually opposite, right? I did, that's the negative direction that I chose at the beginning. That's not a mistake. You can define whatever coordinate system you want for a problem, as long as you follow it meticulously and actually use it throughout the entire problem. Your TA Indiana ran off for some important kitty business. If this video helped you out, please leave your favorite emoji down as a comment just to say thank you. And your TA Indiana will respond back with a kitty emoji to say you're welcome.